Welcome to part three of our presentation, Getting the Most from Your Meter. We're going to talk about making pH measurements in the field. If you're viewing this presentation, you probably are already familiar with the pH scale. Acidic things have a low pH value, like stomach acid, a pH 2. Things with a high pH value are basic or alkaline, such as pH 12, household bleach, and pure water is pH 7 neutral, neither acidic nor basic. Most of our surface water samples are going to have a pH right around pH 7. When you are going out in the field to do pH me measurements, make sure that you bring a few extra items with you, such as a squirt bottle with some distilled water in it. You're going to need this for cleaning your electrode. You're going to need some lint-free laboratory wipes, such as Kim wipes, and you are certainly going to need your pH calibration buffers. So let's begin by talking about how to take care of our pH electrode. Your pH electrode has a delicate glass membrane that will allow hydrogen ions to migrate from your water sample inside the electrode and generate a millivolt signal. So proper storage of this electrode is required to protect that delicate glass membrane. You're never going to use any sort of abrasive cleaner on your pH electrode, and some people even say that you should never even rub it with a lint-free Kim wipe or lint-free laboratory wipe because that could build up an electrostatic charge on the electrode surface. Now you're going to learn how to do your electrode storage and how to clean your electrode because, of course, like always, we're going to read the directions. Now it should be mentioned that most pH electrodes can be damaged by improper storage or even storing it for too long a period of time. Generally speaking, when this happens, you can recondition your electrode and return it to service. Most of the time you'll do this by soaking it in a special solution, such as pH 7 buffer with some potassium chloride added. Your instructions for your meter should tell you how to recondition your pH electrode, and if they do not, call the manufacturer of your, pH, of your meter and get the instructions for reconditioning your pH electrode. So let's talk about the pH electrode calibration curve. Most of the time when you're working in the laboratory, you're going to know whether your pH readings are going to be alkaline or acidic. So the first buffer we put our probe into for calibration will be neutral pH 7. And in this in example, the pH 7 buffer will generate an electrical signal of 0.0, .0 millivolts. The second buffer we would put our probe in for calibration would be, in this example, pH 10, which will generate a millivolt signal of minus 177.5. So any pH reading we make between pH 7 and pH 10 will have a millivolt value somewhere between 0 and minus 177.5. Now in the environmental field, we generally do not know if the water we're going to be measuring is slightly acidic, less than pH 7, or slightly alkaline, more than pH 7. So when we work in the field, we generally calibrate between pH 4 and pH 10. Most of our water samples will be right around pH 7 from about 6.8 to maybe to 7.2, occasionally a little more or a little less than those values. But if we calibrate at pH 4 and we calibrate at pH 10, we are going to have our meter calibrated for all of the likely pH values of our water samples. Now the New Jersey DEP requires that all of the buffers we use for calibration within, be within 0.05 pH units of their true value. So if you buy a pH 4 buffer, the label says pH 4, but the actual value is 3.9, that, that would not meet this New Jersey DEP standard and you shouldn't be using that buffer. Now when we calibrate at pH 4, and then we calibrate at pH 10, 
we would then take a pH 7 buffer and read that buffer. Now the value that we get from reading this pH 7 buffer must be within plus or minus 0.1 pH units of pH 7. So any value between pH 6.9 and pH 7.1 would mean that our meter has been properly calibrated and is ready for use. We could also use pH 6 or pH 8 as our check buffer as long as the, as the check buffer has a pH value between the two buffers that we use for calibration. All pH meters can drift, so after three hours of use, you should double check your meter with your check buffer. So reread that pH 7 buffer as if it were a sample, and it must be within plus or minus 0.2 pH units of pH 7. So in this example, after three hours, any value between pH 6.8 and pH 7.2 means that your meter is still in calibration and you can continue to make measurements. If it doesn't meet this criteria, you must recalibrate your meter before you make any additional measurements. The thing you have to remember about your pH scale is that it is logarithmic. In this example, we calibrated our meter with two pH buffers that were six pH units apart. Now even, these, even though these are only six pH units, because the scale is logarithmic, it represents several orders of magnitude difference in the hydrogen ion concentration. So for really accurate measurements, you may want to calibrate with two buffers that are no more than three pH units apart. In this example, we calibrated at pH four and at pH seven with our check buffer which is red as if it were a sample at pH 6. If you check the New Jersey Administrative Code, it will describe some situations where your pH probes must be calibrated with two buffers no more than three pH units apart. The important thing to remember is that the closer is that the fewer pH units between your calibration buffer, the more accurate your pH readings are going to be. Now, one more thing. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection requires that all pH buffers are discarded after they've been used for calibration or as a check buffer. So try not to dwell on the irony of throwing away your buffers after you've only used them once, especially when we're doing environmental measurements. Thank you for joining us for getting the most from your meter. You can contact me with any questions or comments at the Passaic River Institute office at Montclair State University or at Olsen K, O-L-S-E-N-K, at mail.montclair.edu. Thank you for joining me. Good luck in the field.